Like if my house is burning down, as soon as my family is safe and my pets are safe, I, I, I charge back into the burning house through the flames. This is the thing I grab. Hi, my name is Michael Shore. I am a TV writer and producer in Los Angeles, and I'm about to give Mary Claire a sneak peek at my many cluttered bookshelves on Shelf Portrait. My sneak peek is going to be different, I think, than many people's because I am a book collector. That is my main hobby. So the five books that I have selected to share with you are five first editions from my collection, which is behind me here, and also in other various shelves around my house. So the first one is this. Um, this is The Last Samurai by Helen DeWitt. There's her signature right there. I thought, like most people did, I think, that it was the book version of the movie with Tom Cruise. Uh, it's not. It's about a woman who's raising a child, and the child is this incredibly brilliant, sort of super genius, uh, precocious kid. He goes on a quest to find out who his father is. I tore through it. I read it uh, in one, I think, continuous uh, uh, sitting. It's just beautiful, and I really hope that more people read it. The next one is this one. A book a lot of people have heard of and have attempted to read, <laughs> Infinite Jess by David Foster Wallace. I guess I was a junior in college and uh, it just changed my life. It was the first book I had ever read that seemed to have been written by someone who thought like me. I have a, a, a ridiculous number of first edition copies of this book. Too many. I met David Foster Wallace, and this book is actually inscribed to me. Uh, he wrote me a personal message. And there is the letter that he wrote to me. For M. Shore, with a wide range of somewhat eclectic sentiments, mainly thanks for a moving evening, I'm honored and grateful. Like if my house is burning down, as soon as my family is safe and my pets are safe, I, I, I charge back into the burning house through the flames. This is the thing I grab. Every once in a while, I will block out some time to read a classic piece of literature that I've never read. One of those books that I read in a moment of, I, it's embarrassing that I've never read this, was Beloved. I read it a f about four years ago. It's a miracle of fiction. It, it's a, I've never read anyone who writes like Toni Morrison because Every sentence that she writes is perfect. It's every sentence that she creates has an entire world in it. It really blew me away. And, and I chose it for that reason, but also because recently some people have decided that they want to ban this book, <laughs> that this book is dangerous and it shouldn't be read by uh, young impressionable people in our nation's schools. Nothing could be further from the truth. It is, uh, it is a beautiful, masterwork of fiction. Uh, so after I read it, being a book collector, went and found, tracked down this beautiful first edition. There's her signature right there. So I, I created a TV show called The Good Place, which was about uh, people in the afterlife who were trying to use moral philosophy and ethics to make themselves better people. This is um, a first edition copy of The Subjection of Women by John Stuart Mill. So this was written in 1869. And uh, it comes in this, this isn't the book, this is a case that the book comes in because it's very delicate being 150 years old. So this is what the book looks like. Um, this is a groundbreaking work of, of philosophy and of uh, feminist philosophy in particular. There weren't a lot of people in England in 1869, who dedicated themselves to writing about the uh, inalienable rights of women, and there were certainly fewer men who did so. But John Stuart Mill did, and it's a, it's a wonderful book. It's very readable. If you're interested in reading philosophy, some of philosophy is impenetrable and dense and dull and boring and terrible. Um, this is a very readable book, and it's not very long. This edition is signed as well, but it, in this incredibly charming 19th century way, when you signed a book uh, in the 19th century in England, you didn't write your name. Uh, you wrote the words from the author, which is technically true, I guess, but this, is, this was a big purchase for me. Uh, I bought it as a sort of a present to myself when I finished uh, working on the show. Wow. 
And the final one uh, is this, <clears throat> The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. So I, I created a show, co-created a show called Parks and Recreation. And um, there's a character on the show played by Adam Scott named Ben Wyatt. And Ben Wyatt was modeled after the main character of this book, who is a complete disaster of a person. He's a drunk and a, a lout and just a, just a nightmare. And in the beginning of the book, he stumbles into this town called Casterbridge and he starts playing cards and he ends up betting his wife in the card game. Uh, and she sort of, he says like, I'll, I'll, I'll wager my wife. And she's like, don't do this, man. If you do this and you lose, I'm I'm gonna take you seriously and I'm, I'm gonna leave. I'm not gonna be your wife anymore. And he's like, I don't care. So he loses and, uh, and then she is not his wife anymore. She leaves with the guy that he lost to. It's really a book about how the problems that arise in our lives are sort of inescapable, that you can't ever truly undo the things that you've done. It's one of my favorite novels. So um, those are my five books. Book collecting is a is a lifetime hobby. There are actually books about book collecting and about what how crazy people are who, who collect books. Who is your favorite author? My favorite author changes probably every three years. That's a good tip for how to be a good reader is always be on a, a search to replace the title of favorite author in your life. Who gives you the best book recommendations? Um, I work with a lot of extremely smart and funny people in the uh, TV world and everyone is always reading. So it's mostly the book recommendations are other TV writers who, um, who have maybe don't have kids like I do and have more time on their hands to get through some books that they then pass on to me. Hard copy or e-reader, hard copy only. I cannot use e-readers, I've tried. I understand the value of the e-reader. I wish I liked it more. Can't do it. Do you make notes or highlight lines as you read? I do, I make extensive notes. I recently read the book War and Peace for the first time. I never read War and Peace. There are roughly, I would say, don't quote me on this. I would say there are roughly 700,000 identical sounding Russian people in that book. So I had this endless list of like who they were, how to identify them, how to like understand who they were. It makes it a lot easier. And if it's a soft cover, go crazy. If it's a hard cover, I, I can't do it. What is a book that you were embarrassed to say you never read? Oh, there are so many. Going into a bookstore is a nothing but pain for me. Cause it's just like, nope, 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 nope. D.H. Lawrence and, and Henry James and people like, I've never read Portrait of a Lady, you should probably read that. And so I have a stack that I keep on my night shelf of like, hey, dummy, it's embarrassing that you've never read this. And I've, I've taken care of some of the big ones. I took care of, I took care of Moby Dick, I took care of War and Peace. What's your favorite place to read a book? Um, I will read a book anywhere at any time. Uh, I'll read a book in, a, in my bedroom, in my living room, in my office, sitting on a couch, sitting on a chair, sitting on the floor, in a hotel room, on an airplane. Actually, maybe it's an airplane. I think that's probably the answer I, that I'm just realizing now is in a, on an airplane. When was the last time you stayed up all night to finish a book? I'm too old to stay up all night and finish a book. Uh, there's no way I'm staying up past 12.30 anymore. Final question, have you ever thought about writing a book yourself? So glad you asked. I did write a book. It's called How to Be Perfect. It comes out January 25th. It is a book that came from my experience writing the TV show, The Good Place, which I created uh, back in 2015, 2016. And it's about the moral philosophy and, and theories of ethics that I studied in order to write the show and then continued to study as the show went on. And it's basically a practical guide to using moral philosophy and ethics to try to be a better person. But importantly, it's written like this show was in a way that's attempting to be conversational and humorous instead of what most philosophy is, which is dense and opaque and uh, headache inducing. So it's called How to Be Perfect. Uh, also 100% of all of the proceeds go to charity, uh, advance and royalties and foreign sales and anything else, it doesn't matter. I'm giving it all to charity. That's, uh, that's my hot tip for if you're looking for a new book. Once again, I'm Michael Shore. Thank you for watching my shelf portrait. Make sure to check out my book, How to Be Perfect. And obviously, of course, please subscribe to Mary Claire Magazine.